here is the stuff of which fairy tales are made. The prince and princess on their wedding day. Our faith sees the wedding day not as the place of arrival, but the place where the adventure really begins. The pomp, the pageantry. What's not to love? The technological age has brought with it a growing fascination with the royal family. But there's nothing quite like a royal wedding that gets the nation united in feverish anticipation. Britain has a long history of royal weddings, which have transformed from political and allegiance-led arrangements to genuine love matches, thanks to Queen Victoria and her romance with cousin Prince Albert. Across the globe, people tune in to watch as princes and princesses exchange vows and celebrate their love. From William and Kate to Harry and Meghan, these nuptials have captured the world's attention. William, Arthur, Philip, Louis. Wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife, who live together according to God's law in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto her, so long as ye both shall live? I will. I will. Just an instant yes from you. Yes, as a matter of fact, I could barely let you finish proposing. I was like, can I say yes now? She didn't even let me finish. She said, can I say yes, I can I say yes now? And then, then there was hugs and I had the ring in my finger. And I was like, can I, can I give you the ring? She goes, oh, yes, the ring. <laughs> Walk down the aisle with us, arm in arm, as we relive the ceremony of some of the greatest royal weddings in modern history. Looking at some of the time-honored traditions of pomp and pageantry, to the great weight of the dress reveal and elaborate design of the all-important wedding cake. A royal wedding is an extremely exciting event, not just for the family, but for the public too. The moment we hear of a proposal in the family, the world is anxiously awaiting any details about the special day. The formal announcement of royal marriages has evolved over Queen Elizabeth II's reign. Her Majesty's betrothal was announced by her father, King George VI, at the court circular in 1947. Photos of the couple were taken imminently and circulated around the world. When I was um, trying to impress Kate, um, I was trying to cook these amazing fancy dinners and all that would happen was I'd burn something, something would overspill, something would catch on fire, and she'd be sitting in the background just trying to help and basically take control of the whole situation. So I was quite glad she was there at the time. It has become commonplace for royals to have their official portraits upon their engagement. But we have also been allowed a quick peek behind the curtain as the couple sit down for an interview. It is one of the few times we ever get a glimpse of what the couple might be like together and hear news about the proposal as they share thoughts about their upcoming marriage. One of the most important elements to a wedding is, of course, the wedding dress. It is now popular to wear a white wedding dress, and that is no different for royals. But it has not always been a tradition to wear a white gown. In fact, it was customary to wear your best dress, whatever color that may be. Queen Victoria set a new custom in place as she donned a white dress. But her reason was to be as visible as possible to her well-wishers. Ever since, royal brides have opted for beautiful white gowns for their weddings. Queen Victoria's memory is still alive in another aspect of royal bridal wear, as on her wedding day, she did not wear a tiara, but a wreath of orange blossom. Orange Blossom has since been incorporated into the wedding attire of Queen Elizabeth, Princess Diana, and Catherine, Princess of Wales. Each royal bride picked a unique style and marked their place in history.
Well, it's the most brilliant news, and I'm, I'm just so happy for both of them. They are so happy, and it, it's wicked. So maybe we just ask your reaction to the wedding, please, sir. Well, obviously, obviously it's thrilled. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Practising for long enough. As you know, Catherine and Prince William have been going out together for quite a number of years. We all think he's wonderful, and we're extremely fond of him. We wish them every happiness for the future. We've been talking about, about um, marriage for a while, so it wasn't a massively big surprise, but uh, I took her up somewhere nice in, uh, in Kenya and, uh, and proposed. It's very romantic. There's a true romantic in that. There is. <laughs> and you produced a ring? Yeah. There and then? I did, yeah. I'd been carrying it around with me in my rucksack for about three weeks before that, and uh, I literally would not let it go. Everywhere I went, I was keeping hold of it, because I knew this thing, if it disappeared, I'd be in a lot of trouble. Um, and, yeah, because I planned it, it sort of, it went fine, as, you know, you hear a lot of horror stories about proposing and things get horribly wrong. It went really, really well, and, uh, yeah, I was really pleased that she said yes. One of the greatest moments of the 21st century was the wedding of Prince William to Catherine Middleton, which was celebrated as a modern day fairy tale. Although the couple stayed true to many of the long standing royal traditions, a genuine love match with a long courtship would make for a perfect royal wedding. We both have a great fun time together. We both have a very good sense of humour about things. Um, we down to work. Um, take the mickey out of each other a lot. Um, and she's got plenty of habits that make me laugh, but I tease her about it. <laughs> and Catherine? Well, all of, all of the same, but you know, I'm sort of over the, over the years, but he's really looked after me. He's treated me sort of very well as a great uh, sort of loving boyfriend he is. But, um, you know, he's very, very supportive of me um, in good times and also through the bad times. And, um, no, that's, that's very Even though it was a shock when it was decided that the first in line to the throne was marrying a commoner, the news of their engagement was met with enormous joy by the royal family. One delightful aspect of the engagement was that Prince William gave Kate the ring his mother had been given by Prince Charles at the time of their engagement. The Princess of Wales is admired around the world, and her rise to royalty and influence is of international intrigue. It was very telling that he chose to give Kate Middleton his mother's engagement ring, and he said, I want my mother to be part of this, to be present. The marriage, the ceremony, the wedding, just actually puts a seal on what everybody has been aware of for a long, long time. To my mind, I think the basis of the relationship is respect. She has never been a dog's body or a doormat. She's always fought her corner. Uh, somebody said to her, aren't you very fortunate to be going out with Prince William? And she said, no, he's very lucky to be going out with me. I think Kate stands every chance of being actually a breath of fresh air in the royal family. Um, she's mature, which is important. Uh, she comes from a middle-class background, but a very solid uh, family behind her. Um, I think she's uh, loving, madly in love with her man. But the great thing about her, she's had a little bit of experience of life. Oh! Oh! Well, I haven't really studied it too well, but she's very pretty and, you know, I think she'll make a good future queen. You know, good luck to her. Yeah. But there's a big road ahead for her because people are really paying attention to this young, gorgeous woman who's marrying this lovely, charming, and attractive young man. I love the blue dress that she wore. I mean, and there was so much discussion about that blue Easter dress when she announced her engagement. And I love that. It was just easy and classic. I mean, that's one of those things where you look back 10, 15, 20 years from now and think, she was so pretty and she was so beautiful when they announced her engagement. That's all I wanted to see. I mean, she was glowing. William and Kate's romance is a story that has fascinated the public. They have been on a roller coaster ride of love since they met back in 2001 at St Andrews University in Scotland. After seven years of dating, family life beckoned for the couple. And in November 2010, it was announced that the couple were to marry. The nation took Kate to their hearts, and she has been by her prince's side ever since. Since those early days, their romance has blossomed into a modern-day fairy tale that has been documented and watched across the world. Their relationship has grown, 
strengthened and transformed into an inseparable marriage and a true partnership. When the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge were married at Westminster Abbey on April the 29th, 2011, they followed a long line of British royal weddings. I have with me Paddy Harverson, who is Communication Secretary at Clarence House, who's the man absolutely at the centre of these last <laughs> few months of preparations and planning. How are you feeling today? How's Very it Very excited, yeah, and relaxed. I think the planning's gone well. We're all here, the crowds are here, the weather's holding on. So it's fantastic. And tell me about the prince. How's he doing this morning? He's great. I mean, you know, uh, he's having he's had breakfast with his brother and their friends. And uh, I was with him last night. We were in the press office at Clarence House, and he rang up, said, I want to go outside and meet the crowd. So we all piled out. And it was just fantastic, a lovely spontaneous thing. He wanted to go and say thank you to everyone for, for coming along and queuing up overnight. So he's in great form. It's a really exciting atmosphere here. I think people are very proud to be English. You're seeing a lot of nationalism, a lot of Union Jacks displayed everywhere. And of course, the large contingent of Americans and people from all over the world who have come to celebrate this very, very special couple. This is when the English, the British come to their own. We have all the equipment. We have the household cavalry. We have the wonderful carriages. We have those ancient Rolls Royces. And there's great spirit here, a spirit I think you could say was evocative of 1981 and the wedding of Prince William's parents, Charles and Diana. There's a real enthusiasm for it. I think this morning we saw a bride who's going to be very happy in this royal family. I think people will recognize that this is a, uh, a royal couple for the modern age. It's interesting that in planning their wedding, they have decided to do it their way. They haven't been completely tied up in royal red tape. They've insisted on having a degree of control over what is a state occasion but is also a very private time for them. So in very many key areas, I was pleased to see that Kate Middleton decided not to stay at Clarence House within a royal palace before her wedding. She decided that she would stay at a hotel with her parents, with her parents paying the bill for the hotel, for her leaving from the hotel from her parents or with her father in a car and going the mile to Westminster Abbey, not in a carriage. In other words, she wasn't going to allow the royal family to capture her from the very beginning and put her inside the bubble, the royal bubble. She wanted to assert herself and she was saying, in effect, my family are very important in this too and I'm not going to have them forgotten. Kate has been very, very, very sure to go out in anything that's actually pretty conservative and, and very royal. And I think for a long time, we're not going to see Kate taking any of the risks, both in her fashion life, but also as a person that Princess Diana took. And the other real difference is just age. Kate is nearly a decade older than what Princess Diana was. Prince William made her weighty Katie. He made her wait a very, very long time to get engaged. And that's because he saw what happened with his mother. He saw that she wasn't protected by the royal family. And he wanted to do something very, very different for his future bride. From a very early age, she understood the responsibilities of this role and, and, and she wanted it. But you do have to believe, and from what people close to her do say, is that that's because of a love of Prince William rather than a love of the role. And I think we all hope that that's the case and that this is a marriage that's built on a genuine love. Before the day of the wedding, there was much speculation as to who Kate Middleton would choose to design her dress. Preparations were made in secret by committees of experts, all determined to make a perfect day for the young couple, as well as for the British public. Millions of pounds were invested in every facet of the occasion, from security to catering. The day of the wedding was a truly magnificent spectacle. 
Thousands flocked to London to soak in the atmosphere of excitement and genuine joy, and a real sense of pride and patriotism swept the nation. As Prince William made his way to Westminster Abbey, he was no doubt lifted by thousands of cheering bystanders, greeting and supporting one of the future kings of England. In a break with royal tradition, the groom had a best man, his brother, Prince Harry. As Kate Middleton emerged for the first time in her wedding dress, the world was looking at a young woman who had been working hard to prepare herself for royal life. There's a veil and there is Kate Middleton. We can see that the train of the dress helped into the rear of the vehicle, lace surrounding Kate Middleton's neck and the veil. A great view there of the proud father, Mike Middleton, as he adjusts his jacket, a That's reassuring pat on the arm for his daughter. Lily of the Valley on, uh, on his lapel. She is wearing Brand Alexander McQueen. It is a wedding dress that has been designed, as was speculated, by Sarah Burton. So if you imagined a fairy tale princess and her dress, is that the picture you had in your mind? I think perhaps it might have been. It is the sight, after all these months of build-up and speculation, that many have been longing for, and she's taking a moment to give the crowd a wave. A team have said that the dress epitomises timeless British craftsmanship by drawing together talented and skilled workmanship from across the United Kingdom. Catherine Elizabeth. Take thee, William Arthur Philip Louis. Take thee, William Arthur Philip Louis. To my wedded husband. To my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And thereto I give thee my truth. And thereto I give thee my truth. Amen. Amen. Kate's dress, designed by Sarah Burton, creative director of the luxury fashion house Alexander McQueen, was a creation of extraordinary beauty and elegance. It was of ivory satin with a boned bodice, long lace sleeves, and the hips padded with a full skirt and modest train. The lace was handworked using a traditional Irish technique by members of the Royal School of Needlework, and it had flowers from all over the United Kingdom, from shamrocks to roses. Holding her veil in place, Catherine wore the diamond halo tiara, which had been lent to her by Queen Elizabeth II. 
Kate's wedding gown caused spikes in online searches for wedding dress inspiration, as well as a fashion trend towards long lace sleeves that is still going strong. A bride's bouquet is an important part of the wedding. Catherine followed the tradition of having a sprig of myrtle taken from Osborne House, originally planted by Queen Victoria and representing love, fertility and innocence as well as including Lily of the Valley and Hyacinths. The addition of Sweet William was made, a nod to her husband. Well, what my opinion of the dress was that it was uh, youthfully regal. It was modern with a classic twist to it, which was fantastic because I didn't want Kate to sort of lose touch of Kate in the whole pageantry of this occasion. And I think uh, Sarah Burton for Alexander McQueen did a sublime job. I think the, the lace was so effortlessly executed. It was almost as if she had like a white tattoo all the way down her arm and the fine buttons. And then you saw that quintessential McQueen detail on the ruff of the spine. I thought the skirt was just enough skirt for a venue like the Abbey. I, I think you know, to have something slimmer with a long train, she might not have filled that space with the, with the sort of um, ease as she did with this dress. But I thought she looked very, very beautiful, very exquisite, seriously polished. The dress was very beautiful, but not astounding. And in this, it shows Catherine Middleton's actual behavior all the way through. If you remember Diana's dress, it was slightly over the top, it was huge, it had the longest train of any royal bride, I think 25 feet. It was astonishing. This dress today was beautiful with amazing embroidery that you don't see very clearly on TV, but we'll all see in the photographs. And she looked lovely, but it didn't astound people, it didn't shock people, it didn't surprise people which is Catherine Middleton, who's been very clever all the way through, no leaks, no bad stories, and it, it's very typical of her character, I think. The Maid of Honor, I think, wore one of the dresses of today, also designed by Alexandra McQueen, as, of course, the bride's dress was. Sarah Burton dressed Pippa in this very fitted, very glamorous, very simple dress, soft chiffony type fabric and she looked stunning with just small little flower in her hair lots of freedom to move to obviously look after those tiny little bridesmaids um, i thought pippa looked like the sort of girl who might now have run off with the duke well believe me the decision about what dress designer all of the Middletons were going to use raged for some time and it was a really difficult decision for them. For example, Carol Middleton, she was going to have a dress designed by Linda Chirac and then she shoved that out of the way at the last minute because all of these women knew that this was the enduring image that the world would have of them for some time. So picking a dress designer was so important. In all, around 2,000 specifically invited guests filled the Abbey. During the ceremony conducted by the Archbishop of Canterbury, the couple exchanged traditional vows before a congregation that included members of the royal family, political leaders and celebrities. But Kate did not promise to obey her new husband. On leaving Westminster Abbey, Kate laid her bouquet on the tomb of the Unknown Warrior, a tradition stemming from the Queen Mother in 1923, as she laid her bouquet in memory of her brother Fergus, who had died during World War I. As a couple who value tradition, the Prince and Princess of Wales had a multi-tiered, beautiful fruitcake, carefully crafted by Fiona Cairns. It is a custom for attendees of the wedding to be sent a slice of the wedding cake in the post following the big day, and is just one reason why fruit cake is the cake of choice due to its density and shelf life. But the groom also insisted on a chocolate biscuit cake being served, a childhood favorite. It contained 35 pounds of chocolate and 1,700 tea biscuits.
Prince William looked fantastic in that sort of royals and blue red uniform, very unusual, matched the red of that carpet that went up the centre of Westminster Abbey. He looked marvellous and the white gloves when he was waving at the crowds, he looked the dashing prince. I thought William's choice of, of the red was fantastic. I mean, Kate's heart must have gone pitter-patter completely when she saw her prince standing there. And I caught that glimpse of Harry when he took a, a, he took a, a sideward glance at seeing Kate while William turned the other way. And he said to his brother, she's beautiful. And that was really, really charming between the two boys. Um, you know, how wonderful was that? You know, what got me was I looked at the father you know, Mr. Middleton, and I thought to myself, you know, all those many years ago, he had a little girl. And look what happens, you know, how, you know, the twists and turns of life. So it's fascinating to be standing just metres from St Paul's Cathedral, which is, of course, where Prince Charles and Princess Diana married in 1981, and to think about how different the wedding between Prince William and Kate Middleton is, and that was a very conscious decision by the royal family. Obviously, one of the biggest names at the wedding, especially in the UK, was Victoria Beckham because her and her husband David Beckham are almost British royalty. They're as close as you can come, really. I mean, their house was nicknamed Beckingham Palace, just like Buckingham Palace. So we were all fascinated to see how Victoria Beckham looked because obviously she was so pregnant on the wedding day as well. And of course, Elton John, he was one of the major celebrity guests there. His connection to William comes from the fact that he was a very close friend of his mother, Princess Diana, and who could forget his performance of Candle in the Wind at Princess Diana's funeral, which obviously in a sad and ironic twist was also held at Westminster Abbey. As Buckingham Palace was surrounded by thousands of cheering onlookers, they finally got to witness the first public kiss between Prince William and Kate Middleton. We just see some movement there behind those curtains, and here we go. Oh, wow, she says. Oh, oh wow. wow. <laughs> That was the kiss that everybody wanted. And there was no prompting or persuasion needed. No. <laughs> <laughs> the glittering occasion was witnessed and watched by billions of people around the world. A spectacular event that has rightfully earned its place in British history. William and Kate's royal marriage still thrives to this day. In the decade following their marriage, they welcomed three children into the family. Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. And it has been a joy to watch. I, William Arthur Philip Louis, take thee, Catherine Elizabeth, as my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part. It's a standard, typical night it's for us. It's a cosy us. night. It was, what were we doing? Just roasting chicken roasting and having... Roasting chicken. <laughs> trying to roast chicken. <laughs> trying to roast a chicken. And it was just, a, uh, just an amazing surprise. It was so sweet and, and natural and very romantic. He got on one knee. Of course. Was it an instant yes from you? Yes, as a matter of fact, I could barely let you finish proposing. I was like, can I say yes now? She didn't even let me finish. She said, like, can I say yes, can I say yes now? And then, then there was hugs and I had the ring in my finger. And I was like, can I, can I give you the ring? She goes, oh, yes, the ring. <laughs> so no, it was, um, it was a really nice moment. It was just the two of us. And um... Prince Harry chose an American girl, Meghan Markle, to be his princess. It has been quite a whirlwind for the unlikely couple to make it this far. On May the 19th, 2018, the eyes of the world were on the historic town of Windsor. The wedding was held at St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle grounds, Queen Elizabeth II's favorite residence, built in 1475. 
This stunning 15th century Gothic chapel has seen many royal weddings within its walls, including the one of Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles in 2005. Hundreds of hours of planning brought incredible beauty and elegance to a setting fit for a fairy tale. Before the guests began to arrive and before the crowds began lining the streets, a massive operation was underway to ensure that every aspect of the couple's special day would go swimmingly. Their wedding at Windsor Castle caught the attention of millions of people across the globe and brought Britain and America together. After a two-year love story, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle tied the knot. It was the biggest royal wedding since Prince William and Kate's wedding in 2011. It was a stunning display of two very different worlds, combined with sentimental details. The intertwining of traditional and modern elements displayed to the public that times are changing in royal tradition. The American actress turned princess wanted a new, fresh design for her wedding dress, and she succeeded in her intent to look absolutely stunning. The dress had a timeless elegance, reminiscent of Princess Margaret's dress. Her veil, magnificently detailed, was delicately edged with flora from each Commonwealth country and held in place with Queen Mary's bandeau tire, made in 1932. Although the dress was very simple in terms of design, there were no beads, there was no lace, the train was magnificent. It was something like 30 feet long. It had roses from every place in the Commonwealth. It was absolutely thoughtfully and beautifully done. Meghan was a spectacular bride, which is what we expected her to be. But what was also interesting to me was she was not interested in flash. She was not interested in upstaging anybody. She was very simple, elegant, and tasteful. Uh, this was a very glamorous woman who knows that she knows how to pull off a dress like that. Megan was absolutely glamorous, radiant and beautiful, no less than we expected from a Hollywood star. Her compact bouquet was made of forget-me-nots, which were Princess Diana, Prince Harry's mother's favorite flower, and speckled with seasonal flowers that were handpicked by Harry himself. Harry was the one to break tradition by deciding to wear a wedding band, unlike Prince William and Prince Philip. Quite touchingly, as Meghan's father could not attend the ceremony, Meghan walked the first portion of the aisle alone, and Prince Charles walked her for the rest of it. Ahead of the official proclamation, the couple exchanged sweet and mostly traditional vows. Although, like Princess Diana and Kate Middleton before her, Markle omitted the word obey from her vows to Harry. So a particularly touching moment when Megan first walked down the aisle to Harry, he looked at her and he said, hi. 
And then he said, you look amazing. So for those of us romantics, it brought quite a tear to our eyes to see this couple that's very obviously madly in love uh, see each other at the altar for the very first time. Whilst we didn't get the romantic balcony kiss on Buckingham Palace, the couple did share a kiss on the steps of the chapel as they left. The couple then embarked on a celebratory carriage procession through the town of Windsor. The streets were lined with thousands upon thousands of cheering well-wishers. It was a grand, regal display, and the newlyweds looked over the moon. Harry and Meghan decided against the fruitcake tradition for the all-important wedding cake, instead opting for a lemon elderflower cake made by Claire Tack of London's Violet Bakery. America is over the moon because it feels like we finally got our own real life princess. And I would say what stood out to me was William seemed far more nervous than Harry did. Harry was far more emotional than William. We had saw a lot more tears from Harry. I don't I didn't remember seeing any from William on the day. But in both cases, the brides appeared to be less nervous and more strong than the grooms, which I thought was very touching and romantic. Um, both William and Kate and Meghan and Harry appear to be two couples who are very much mad in love with each other and far from the days in royals past where things were arranged and things were loveless in both young couples today we see a great strong bond of romance love and affection i think it's a really interesting time for the royal family and i think this marriage sort of cements a transition that's been happening for a while with the monarchy modernizing and moving with the times if you look back to you know 30 years ago even Divorce was such a taboo, it's no longer a taboo. Our next king and queen again are both divorced. So the fact that Harry is now able to marry someone who's been, who's been divorced isn't an issue, is a great thing. She's mixed race. That would have been an issue probably years ago. It isn't anymore. It's great. It means that Harry's wife is going to be much more reflective of society in general than the sort of blue blooded people who've married into the royal family previously. So I think it's a brilliant thing. But above all of that, they're clearly in love, so that's a, you know, all the other things are just a bonus in helping to show a much more modern, relevant monarchy. Meghan's more daring second wedding dress certainly showed more skin that would have been deemed acceptable at Windsor Castle. When the Duchess of Sussex showed up at her reception in a gorgeous white halter neck dress designed by Stella McCartney with a shoulder-bearing neckline and an open back, there was a 185% increase in online searches for similar styles following the wedding. Meghan's wedding gown sent brides into overdrive, looking for modern, sleek gowns for their own weddings. Along with royal fashion, brides-to-be look at royal wedding beauty for trends. With royal brides becoming more visible, more brides have tried to emulate the pomp and celebrity-level services royals enjoy. Marking the beginning of their happily ever after, Harry and Meghan's wedding straight out of a Disney cartoon will be remembered in history as one of the most celebrated and spectacular royal events of all time. A historic day, a pure celebration of joy and love. Just a few short months after Prince Harry and Meghan's wedding, Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank tied the knot at the same historic venue on October the 12th, 2018. 800 guests, including the bride's royal grandparents, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, as well as several of the couple's celebrity friends, attended the couple's star-studded ceremony, which included a five-tier wedding cake and a festival-themed bash. Taking another cue from Harry and Meghan's nuptials, the couple also invited 1,200 members of the public from across the UK to view their wedding up close. Designed by Pilotto and Voss, Eugenie's divine long-sleeved gown featured a structured bodice, a low V-shaped back, and flowing skirt. 
For the second part of her wedding day, Eugenie changed into a fitted blush-toned dress designed by Zach Posen. Its pastel hue was said to be inspired by the beauty of Windsor and the blush of an English rose. While royal weddings are usually grand affairs, it's the little details brides pick up on and that trends are made of and causes the wedding industry to boom. The fabric included several symbols that were meaningful to Eugenie, such as a thistle for Scotland, to acknowledge the couple's fondness for Balmoral, a shamrock for Ireland as a reflection of the bride's maternal family, and the York Rose and Ivy to represent the couple's home. Eugenie chose to wear a tiara lent to her by Queen Elizabeth II instead of a traditional veil. When her sister, Princess Beatrice of York, married property developer Eduardo Mapelli Mozzi on July the 17th, 2020 at the Royal Lodge Windsor, she set off a flurry of interest in heirloom wedding details. Beatrice's gown was a remodeled one from Elizabeth II's coronation and a stunning tiara from the Queen's own wedding. They were the first royals to marry during the COVID-19 pandemic, and the ceremony was small and private. While many royal weddings come with huge crowds and large fanfare, Princess Beatrice decided to keep hers completely secret until after they had tied the knot. It seems that the modern era now expects something understated and classy when it comes to royal wedding dresses. In recent years, they have reflected the women that wore them, and although vastly different from each other, they were always sleek and elegant. Royal weddings are now starting to challenge tradition, and this is reflected in new wedding trends where brides would rather have what they want rather than what tradition dictates. There's nothing quite like a British royal wedding. Lavish ceremonies, glass carriages, ethereal cakes, prancing horses, yards long wedding trains, diamond tiaras, botanical traditions, and thousands of cheering people. It's always a big occasion that brings a whole country into a flurry of excitement and fascination. In recent years, wedding day styles and traditions have evolved. Royal couples have put their own modern twist on their wedding ceremonies, and they have all influenced the wedding industry and the way we say, I do, today. These magically modern royal weddings will forever go down as some of the most memorable moments in British history. And grant that he who gives it and she who shall wear it may remain faithful to each other and abide in thy peace and favour, and live together in love until their lives end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. <laughs>